Hi, my name is Taylor Ryder. I'm a postdoc in the Green Lab at the University of Colorado Anschutz. And today I'm gonna to be telling you about a project that we undertook to build a compendium of bacterial and archaeal RNA-seq data. So what are compendia of RNA-seq data? They are collections of publicly available RNA-seq samples uh, or gene expression data that are uniformly pre-processed and then collected along with interesting metadata um, and made easily accessible and downloadable so that they can be used to answer um, different biological questions. There are a lot of different compendia, um, and these are, are sort of generally useful um, collections of data. So there's things like Recount and the Cancer Genome Atlas. Um, and on the right here, I'm showing a principal component analysis from one of the Recount compendia, where all of this metadata associated with the uh, tissue of origin for an RNA-seq sample is collected and distributed in the same place as the gene counts for those samples. And then we can see how similar different RNA-seq samples are across different tissues or ask any other sort of question related to this data. So there are a lot of existing compendia, not just for human, but also for microorganisms. But within microorganisms, most of the existing compendia have really been focused on model organisms. So things like E. coli K12 or Pseudomonas aeruginosa um, or Staph aureus. So the goal of this project was to expand uh, a compendium to include all of the bacterial and archaeal uh, data that's publicly available in the sequence read archive. So that's about 60,000 RNA-seq samples that represent just uh, under 1,700 uh, species. And for the majority of species, there's usually only a few transcriptomes or, or RNA-seq samples available. But for some things like E. coli, we have many thousands of RNA-seq samples. To build this compendium, we undertook, um, when we were undertaking this effort, we learned some lessons from some existing compendia. Um, so in particular, this one uh, for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, where we learned two important lessons. The first was that when we're using uh, a tool to quantify um, a gene salmon, which uh, maps against a transcriptome, you need to use unpaired read uh, mode even if you collected paired data. And this is because microbes have polycystronic transcripts where um, genes from the same operon will um, be represented in different transcripts, and so you need to map against them separately. The second lesson is that there, you need to use a, a reference pan genome instead of a single reference strain when you're mapping against um, these organism transcriptomes. Um, so here I'm showing that for two strains of Pseudomonas, um, for a subset of different isolates, um, there, no single strain is the best reference. So if we combine all the genes across all of the strains that we've observed, we get a much better um, reference set of genes. So taking these lessons into account, we built an automated snakemake pipeline that um, will build this compendium. So the first step is to download and uh, quality trim the different reads, and then we infer the taxonomic composition of uh, each sample using a tool called Sour Mash Gather. Using this information, we can select the best reference species for each sample, and then we can build a reference pan genome using all of the genomes for that species in the genome taxonomy database. We can annotate uh, this pan genome at both the gene and the ortholog level, and then use it to map um, against to infer the, um, the uh, amount each gene is expressed in each sample. So we finished the first arm of this pipeline, and in general, we uh, can recall um, the majority of reads and figure out which genes they come from. But in a lot of samples, we, we see a fair bit of contamination. For many of these samples, the contamination is human, but for the majority, it actually comes from other microorganisms or different uh, eukaryotic sample or uh, organisms. Um, our species assignments generally match those of the sequence read archive, although there's some differences. And then we can get down to the strain level and see things like for E. coli, SQ37 and E. coli K12 are the two most observed strains. So we finished this first part and now we're running the second part and we hope to host the data on Refine Bio sometime in the next couple months. Thank you uh, to my funding and collaborators. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at this email address.